Hello, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, my name is Jessica Spekers, and today I'll be discussing my book chapter that explores the knowns and the unknowns of international fishery conflicts. So disagreements over fishing quotas and over maritime boundaries, they have occurred many times in the past. I think maybe the most infamous example that we can think of when we think about an international fishery conflict are the infamous Cod Wars that occurred in 1950 and, the seven, and 1970 between the UK and Iceland, uh, which you can see depicted here behind me. But also more recently, we've seen many tensions over fishery resources, for example, between China and its neighboring countries, where continuous vessel incursions into foreign or into disputed waters have even led to deaths at sea. There's, there's also been clashes between fishermen from India or f and Sri Lanka, or between fishermen from India and Pakistan. But these problems are not limited to the developing world. Also in the developed world, we see these problems popping up. For example, the mackerel dispute that is still ongoing between the EU, Norway, Faroe Islands, and Iceland, um, which is actually very much ramping up again, but also the scallop wars between the UK and France. So why are these fishery conflicts an issue? Well, they can endanger different dimensions and different aspects of security, such as human or national security. It can make it unsafe for fishermen to venture out into the sea. It can um, really compromise the territorial sovereignty of a nation state. But it can also endanger the sustainability of a stock, as we have seen with the Northeast Atlantic mackerel that has now lost its MSC certification. There's also some recent data that is showing that these international fishery conflicts are, have in fact increased. Um, and particularly so during the last decade. Um, these types of conflicts can range from verbal disagreements between states to military action at sea. Um, and what this data also shows is that it is particularly becoming an issue between uh, countries in Asia, and oftentimes it's driven by illegal fishing. But also the potential environmental drivers of conflict are ramping up. It is worried that a continuous decline in catch from wild capture fisheries or deteriorating coastal environments um, could lead to an increased race to fish between states and again lead to conflict. But also climate change is driving unprecedented geographic shifts of different marine species because of altered water temperatures. And this has already led to huge governance challenges and to international conflict. You can see um, here behind me a figure from a recent paper that was led by Mail and Pinsky um, that shows you that many of the um, exclusive economic zones will likely receive up to between one and five new climate-driven transboundary stocks by the end of the century when we compare the period 1950-2014 to 2090-2100. And this, the amount of um, exclusive economic zones that will receive these stocks will only increase as global temperatures increase. Now this is all sounding quite doom and gloom, perhaps, or um, we might all become very scared of future security issues at sea. But will this really be the case? We can't really say yet. There's many unknowns when it comes to um, fishery conflict, and one of the, the one that I will discuss today relates to causality, and the other ones you can hopefully read about in the book chapter. But so there is no fundamental consensus when it comes to what really drives, what are the real causes or mechanisms that, that connect these fishery resources to conflict. In fact, the literature that deals with these issues, the environmental security literature, has moved beyond kind of simple cause and effect explanations for these conflicts into a realm that looks at multiple conflict drivers and complex causal pathways. Um, and it is important to then realize that most likely environmental reasons alone are not going to be the sole cause of these conflicts. They definitely don't explain um, conflict intensity, for example. So it is important that we start assessing multiple conflict drivers, social, economic, and environmental. 
Um, and this can help uh, policymakers to prevent or de-escalate um, future fisheries conflict, but maybe also can help us understand how it seems to be that oftentimes fishery conflict seems to be entangled with wider regional instability. Is it, for example, the case that um, the race or the competition over fishery resources is leading to these clashes between states? Or is it actually that these um, resource-based conflicts are mere proxies for bigger power struggles in regions, for naval superiority or um, for territorial dominance? Um, it is those questions that become very important if we want to ensure maritime security for the future. Thank you.